In this video, I'll be going to break down everything we hope to see in the game's combat system. I have never had the opportunity to play any of the Final Fantasy games during my childhood. This was mainly due to my lack of exposure to the gaming world. However, I believe that Final Fantasy XVI must have an exceptional combat system. The series has always been known for its innovative gameplay mechanics, and a mediocre or predictable combat system could potentially harm its success. With the advancements in technology since the release of Final Fantasy XV, there is a great opportunity to create a truly remarkable combat system that will captivate players and keep them engaged for hours on end. This title is just a small piece of a larger narrative, leaving the conclusion of the endgame storytelling up in the air, I was immediately captivated by its intricacy and depth. The character design and direction are truly exceptional, showcasing the creative talent behind the game. The world in which they reside is both gritty and beautiful, with a unique atmosphere that draws you in. Unlike many other games, there is minimal repetition in the storyline, and while it may be linear, there is a sense of open-world exploration that adds to the overall experience. Final Fantasy has always been known for its innovative, turn-based battles, but in recent years the franchise has ventured into real-time combat as well. Regardless of which direction they choose, Final Fantasy XVI needs to take things to the next level with its battle system mechanic and compelling narratives. Instead, there seems to be a trend towards games with less substance and more widespread appeal. The original Final Fantasy VII was a beloved classic, and while the remake may not be a perfect replica of the original story, it exceeded my expectations in terms of overall delivery. Some may argue that the game is incomplete, as Square Enix has announced that this is only part one of several episodes. However, Final Fantasy VII Remake offers a minimum of 40 to 50 hours of gameplay, not including additional post-game content. Once you experience the depth and quality of this game, you'll understand why Square Enix needs to expand it into separate parts. The remake stays true to its roots, while also expanding on some of the characters, environments, and storylines that fans fell in love with in 1997. However, there are some expansions to the story that I find questionable, particularly in the latter parts of the game. I'm not saying that it's a deal breaker or that I don't like it, but rather that I'm undecided about how it will play out until more is revealed in the next installment. According to those who have played Devil May Cry, this game feels like a natural extension of the combat mechanics. This is likely due to the fact that the combat director from Capcom's Devil May Cry was poached for the development of Final Fantasy XVI. While the visuals may appear lackluster at first glance, the game actually offers a deep and intricate combat system with numerous combo interactions and interchangeable abilities. I am pleased that the developers have opted for an action role-playing game ARPG, approach, incorporating technical combat while also providing numerous accessibility options for those who simply want to enjoy the spectacle and storyline. The game's world is expansive, boasting a diverse range of environments that one would expect from a Final Fantasy game. It is a stunning world that begs to be explored. Additionally, the characters seem to be intriguing and varied, adding to the game's overall appeal. As a seasoned Final Fantasy fan, I can confidently say that the icon battles in Final Fantasy XVI are going to be absolutely insane. The icons, known for their immense size, strength, speed and durability, have been a staple of the franchise since their first appearance in Final Fantasy VII. However, with advances in technology and game design, these battles are sure to surpass anything we've ever seen before. From strategic planning to intense combat sequences, players will undoubtedly be on the edge of their seats throughout each encounter with these formidable beasts. However, there is one issue that some fans have raised concerns about. In the trailer, it appears that the big flashy moves don't seem to do much damage to the enemies. 
While this may be for trailer purposes, it's understandable that some fans would prefer to see more realistic damage in the game. Another concern that has been raised is the shift away from turn-based battles. Some fans feel that this new game is too focused on hack and slash gameplay and would prefer a return to the turn-based battles of classic games like Xenogears. In this game, enemies operate on a poise break system similar to that of Final Fantasy VII Remake. By observing the enemy bars, you can see that they take chip damage when hit, and there is a yellow bar beneath it. When this bar is depleted, the enemy becomes staggered. This means that they fall to the ground for a brief period, during which they take significantly increased damage. The strategy is to break their will, and then use high damage combos to burst them down. The adds that do not have these bars typically die within 3 to 4 combos, which is standard. It is worth noting that only the enemies in the companion showcase displayed stagger damage. It is possible that the developers intentionally avoided showing it in other clips to showcase the full range of combo possibilities. This is a fair assessment. Personally, I don't mind the change as it allows for more opportunities to showcase skill. However, if not properly calibrated, it can make weaker enemies feel overly resilient. I am hopeful that the developers will make necessary adjustments. It's worth noting that the footage we've seen thus far is not from the final version, so there is a chance that they have already made tweaks. While I am eager to indulge in the world of Final Fantasy, I find myself disinterested in Devil May Cry or Bayonetta. The gameplay, story, and characters fail to captivate my attention. Instead, I am eagerly anticipating the release of Final Fantasy VII Part II, which promises to deliver an immersive and thrilling experience. That's all for now. If you like this type of content, please let me know by giving a sub to the channel and leave your thoughts on this new battle system Square Enix pulling on back. As always thank you for watching.